I am Sesvara. Hear me roar. Welcome to the re-review. Solid years. A happy third birthday to CMA and a special heartfelt thank you to every single one of you for the support. Over 150 reviews. What does it mean when you chase the dragon? This headphone, in fact, this exact headphone, the hi fi Sesvara 2.5 variant was loaned to the channel Convince Me Audio two years ago from one of our viewers Grant. Titling that video, Where the Journey Ends, it's laughable two years later to think that's where my thought processes lay. In fact, it had just begun. Let's discuss this notorious headphone after two years of thorough testing on the channel on some of the highest equipment the industry has to offer. I find it extraordinarily fitting thanking Grant again two years later for the same headphones, for the same purpose, with a far more in-depth and knowledge that hopefully I can share with you. And hopefully you'll find some use out of it. Now these headphones, 60 ohms, anywhere from 74 dB sensitivity to 83 dB sensitivity. Nobody seems to have a proper consensus in regards to this because they all seem to measure slightly differently. So they are extraordinarily hard to drive. In fact, they have become notorious for this fact. These units have been ran on speaker amplifiers. We have found in our community that these headphones have been ran on monoblocks, powerful amplifiers, well exceeding over something what a headphone would require. And finally, I think we have the answers why. First and foremost, let's get rid of some of the myths that seems to be running around rampant in communities and forums. You can get the hi fi Vara loud on anything. This is not the reason why we put a hi fi Vara on monoblocks, for example. This is not why we put it on a Holo Audio Bliss that outputs 12 watts into 32 ohms. It's not the amount of watts. Because the Sesvaras can get to ear bleeding loud levels on something like a Motar Mo2, which costs $150, on a Topping A90. In fact, I reviewed this unit back at the beginning of the channel on a Topping A90 and an HDVD800 amplifier and DAC combo using just its DAC. That's not what it's about. This headphone requires enormous amounts of headroom large amounts of current and unfortunately the power supply the distortion levels are just not on point on the lower end amplifiers op amp based amps like the top in a90 it just doesn't cut it now over the last two years we've had some fantastic innovations and introductions of headphone amplifiers in the industry prior to this when i did the review there were very few now we have the Q-Style CMA15, which just drives Sesvaras perfectly nicely. 
Yes, it does, at $2,500. We have the Or and Hypsos at $3,000. We have the Bliss at $3,000. All these were non-existent at the time. The CMA15 is a current drive amp with slightly different tech to proper full-on current drive modes. So, why do we need such hefty power supplies and why do we need such high current? Getting Sesvara to 80 dB levels of noise, for example, on a 1 kHz sine wave is easy. It can be done, but that's just a tone. If you fancy listening to a 1 kHz signal all day long, put it on the top in a 90. You won't have any problems, right? The problem is, with these types of amplifiers, what you find is, as you go up, as you provide gain to the headphones, as you get the volume louder and louder, the treble region has a tendency to increase, leaving the bass region behind. Hence why you see so many reviews of high finances barers being driven on poor end equipment and saying they're shouty, they have a harsh mid-range, they have no bass slam, etc. It's fortunate that this myth is slowly dissipating and kind of the more knowledge that seems to be out there, the better the community is informed. When you play a song, it plays these tones at 20 kilohertz, at 17 kilohertz, at 20 hertz, at 50 hertz, at 150 hertz, all simultaneously. Being able to keep up with all of these, providing enough current and voltage correctly is key. Headroom is key. Okay, moving on. So as far as are a strange beast, they require a lot of headroom. On the channel, I pursued the highest level of performance I could get out of these headphones for the last two years. The journey began with a single benchmark, giving fantastic bass performance, excellent open stage, and yet I felt as though the Spring 2 wasn't enough at the time, the Extreme Edition. We pursued to the May, the May KTE. We found these drivers can not only pick up amp differences, obviously, but even the DAC you use is highly observable, even to the nitty gritty ends of the spectrum where there's a lot of tumult about cables, where the cables make a difference, where the interconnect seems to make a difference on the super high end chains. What equipment have we ran the Sesvaras on? Let's work our way backwards, shall we? Right now, the Bliss and the Wave Dream from Rockner. Prior to this, the May KTE, the Serene KTE, and the Benchmark Monoblocks. Prior to that, a single Benchmark and a Spring 2 Extreme Edition, incorporating the Dave, the M-Scaler, the Core TT2, the IDSD Signature, the OR, the Hypsos, the list seems to be endless. Incidentally, I put down the Hi-Fi Mensas Varas. I sold my Hi-Fi Mensas Varas. This is back here for this re-review only, and then it's gonna go back to Grant. I put down the Sesvaras because I couldn't take it anymore. I thought I had pushed these headphones on a $30,000 chain as far as it needed to go. And incidentally, when these came back in and we pushed it on the Bliss and the Wave Dream, I realized the monoblocks weren't no longer necessary. Now, a Bliss and a Wave Dream gives you the same performance, punch, visceral impact, stage, textural information, and my goodness, timbre, as that mad setup I had going here up to January. I guess the question you would probably ask me is why? I think it became a bit of an obsession. The hi fi Varas are the best planars in the world. Nothing matches them. Nothing comes close and nothing has beaten them. I literally recently just reviewed the ZMF Calderas back there, the latest addition to the planar family. I have compared these to more planars than I can count. Not only that, I have the Warwick Aperio $30,000 system here at the moment. I recently had the Valkyra come in and is going to come back for the full review later on. The AB1266, Phi and TC have been tested against this. This LCD5 on some of the highest end chains I could put together. Or Hypso, Serene, Dave, M-Scaler, anything you throw the Sesvaras on that can power it properly 
from the Riviera AIC 10 all the way up to power amps, purify. That thing was crazy. That thing was like 400 watts at four ohms. It was insanity levels. And Sesvaras just shrugs them off. There is no ceiling to these headphones. You will never catch the dragon. Placing the Bliss and the Wave Dream on Sesvaras has been the best experience yet. I can safely say we have left the technicalities that we deemed the pinnacle of Sasvara's last year has been surpassed exponentially. Let me tell you about the very first CMA Hi-Fi show in 2024 we put together a few weeks ago. So therefore this review did require to be upgraded and refreshed in this specific section as it pertains to the headphones themselves. The hi fi Varas got tested on the AIC-10 Riviera, the Amp and Sound Red October, the Mass Kobo 465, the 394, a Burson amplifier, the IFI Phantom, the WA33 from Wu Audio, and the Tsail HM1 with the Wave Dream signature that now has arrived and is the reference DAC for the channel. By the way, this is an exponential jump from the Wave Dream Edition and has enhanced every amplifier we have put on it. Also, we had the addition of the Lampezeta Atlantic TRP3 for assessment too. Surpassing and pushing hi fi Varus to such an extent, it blew my mind. Genuinely, hand on heart, I can safely say these drivers have absolutely no limitations except the equipment you put behind it. Some of the most euphonic experiences for me surpassing the HE1 Orpheus for musicality was Amp and Sound Red October and the Wave Dream Signature. This was an enormous, probably the largest stage I've ever heard on Hi Fi Mansas Varas. With the warmest, luscious sound, I have come across this side of the PS Vein tubes on the Lampazator. It was absolutely sensational. A touch of ZMF, mid-range, but no bloom, the weight and incisiveness of a performance that only the Rockner Wave Dream Signature can deliver. On the AIC-10 and the Wave Dream Signature, we had far more of an intimate soundstage, yet the headphones were large sounding where instruments were concerned tonally liquid sounding, highly musical, extremely impactful, giving us the other end of the spectrum to the Red October. Putting the Sasvaras on the WA33 Elite, a six hour warm up time to be sure, but with the Wave Dream signature, stage is very closely tied behind Red October. It's a reference sound, holographic, highly punchy. It felt as though I had jumped from listening to speakers on the desk, reference near field monitors, to large PAs in a concert hall. The scope and size of hi fi Varas on this setup is exponentially fantastic and a massive jump up from Bliss and Wave Dream Edition. We are now approaching Warwick Acoustics Aperio, give or take a couple of percent due to the innate characteristics of Warwick Acoustics Aperio's resolution or the Shangri-La Senior's resolution. But honestly, giving you the most versatile setup where you can stick 1266, etc. on these setups, but exceeding the price of Aperio where the system build is concerned. We pushed some of these system builds well beyond $60,000 and the drivers kept on giving. But my standout, even with Lampazeta and AIC-10, which gives you a holographic vinyl sound that no other DAC has delivered here at CMA yet, has been the Amp and Sound Red October and the Wave Dream Signature. And on the other end of the spectrum for pure reference, studio sound, yet with true musicality now, with true organic textures and tactility, is that sale HM1 and Wave Dream Signature. That re-review will be coming because I'm telling you, this DAC has pushed all of these amplifiers well out of their comfort zone and into the next tier. 
I genuinely believed from the review last year, Sail HM1 would not be part of the conversation of AIC 10, Red October, Mascobo 465, which I need to talk about now. Mascobo 465 with Sesvaras and Wave Dream Signature gives you a warmer sound. It's closer to the, I would say, using PS Vein on the AIC 10 and Lampazeta and closer to Red October's tonality than it is to HM1 or AIC 10 or WA33. This is an amplifier with enormous stage, massive heft of weight and fantastic fantastic tactile information, etc. I felt as though the stage on this amplifier was too rigid and every song sounded the same. Big, open and wide, the way Chord Dave delivers its stage. It did not have the capacity to shrink and expand the stage, yet elements within the stage were truly special. Signature is the most technical DAC we've had here below 28,000 pounds, that being the Rossini Apex and Clock. It's absolutely phenomenal, and hi fi Mansas Varas and Sail HM1 truly highlight the capabilities of this DAC. Being able to not only detect instruments close to your ear, but being able to identify microphone placement within the stage as close to the instrument or as further away from the instrument as it required during the track and being able to deliver that information. This was an absolutely sensational event. I thank every single one of you who attended and I cannot wait for the next one. But truly, on the Amp and Sound Red October, Wave Dream Signature and using the hi fi as Varas, I can Hand on heart say, I have never been so enthralled by a system, despite of price, category, etc. It's so musical, so mid-range rich, so tactile and yet enormous sounding without sounding overly bloomy and losing weight or edge of attack. This has been the special setup for me, truly subjectively in this hobby and doing this quote unquote professionally over the last 22 years. It blew my mind. Every single person at the show I showed our test tracks with were utterly enthralled. And on the other end of the spectrum, the Tsail HM1 or AIC or WA33, yet due to the reference sound of the Tsail HM1 with Wave Dream Signature, giving you an accurate representation of every element of the track, including air, ambience, filters, etc. that's been added to the track was placed correctly and perfectly within the track itself, reproduced exponentially nicely, reproduced very well, showcasing true technicality and these two systems honestly I think might be my reference points for CMA going forward. At the moment, AIC-10 Riviera is the fly in the ointment. I can't let it go. I can't give it up. It's absolutely enthralling. And the thought of having all three on the desk is a dream, but not financially viable. If we're talking about technicality, has the best timbre of any headphone until you jump up to a Valkyria for the genres it's good at. Those are a very weird headphone. And obviously the Aperio. This is the summit tier headphone of the planar realm for now in 2023. You can push your chain up to 30,000 and still it will give more. The higher you go up the chain, the more accurate the timbre seems to become, the more viscerally impactful it seems to be. Sub bass and the ease of play, the effortlessness of the driver feels very electrostatic. And tonally, the Sesvaras changes with very high-end equipment, amplifier to amplifier, etc. It was the bliss and the wave dream that allowed me to come back to some semblance of normality after the Epirio and the wave dream and all that mad setup over there. I honestly thought the Sesvaras were broken for the first nine days after I heard Epirio check out the review here if it's been released already. But that's a system by itself that's 30,000. It's in a different league, it's electrostatic. We're not gonna count that. But we are going to count everything that's been released in the last three or four years against the Sesvaras. 
the LCD5, 1266, the Utopia, the D8000 Pro. Here's the thing, there might be some headphones that will give you a tiny bit more in some mad area. Maybe it's the build quality. Maybe it's the slight ease of slamminess on easier equipment. Maybe it's a bit more resolving due to the tonality, LCD5 for example. Or maybe it retrieves de details better, like the Brevera from Warwick. Check out the review here. But never have I found a headphone yet that is as consistent throughout every aspect of the headphone performance. Bass performance, treble performance, mid-range performance, timbre, spatial presentation, ease of delivery, effortlessness, where as it's as if the driver doesn't exist, where the sound seems to be coming out of the air and yet slamming your eardrums like a truck. It has a sound characteristic and ease of play I've not heard in any dynamic or planar headphone yet. I think there's a reason why hi fi men have not released another Sesvara as of right now. It's been six years. I don't think they can beat it. I think the next Sesvara iteration that will come out will be different, might be slightly better somewhere, but it's not going to make OG Sesvaras redundant. So what have I learned in two years and multiple thousands of pounds worth of equipment? I have learned that the hi fi men Sesvaras are annoying, difficult to drive, difficult to synergize, but when you get the best out of them, they are still king in the planar and dynamic realm of the world. Every other headphone, Neil. Sesvaras are still king. If you like reviews such as these, consider coming over to Patreon and joining us in the private Telegram chat, supporting the channel, and hearing about these headphones and others as they come in for review before they land on YouTube. If not, your like, your share, your subscription is all I require from you to allow the channel to grow. And if you fancy the original Sesvara review, click here. I do apologize. It was the very first review on the channel in regards to lighting and sound, but hopefully the innate part of the review should highlight how highly valued I think these headphones are in our community. And a special thank you for the 100th review on the channel. Thank you for the support. I can't believe we got here. This is insane. Until next time, peace.